Hello, and welcome to episode 87 of the Victorian Studio podcast. My name is Maureen, and I'm coming to you from my studio here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Welcome to all new and returning viewers. I hope you enjoy seeing what I have to share today. Well, it really hasn't seemed like I've been retired for a few weeks, although technically I'm still on vacation. I had seven weeks vacation to use up before my retirement officially begins in mid-September. So I've taken this time to get a new routine in. Um, I've also been very, very busy uh, preparing for the Manitoba Fiber Festival that's coming up quickly. It's the first time I'll be vending at this festival. It's the largest fiber festival in our province, so I'm thrilled to be a first-time vendor over there. Um, so I've been restocking my charms, carding up a whole bunch, um, working on my display and my inventory, um, setting up some new processes, and uh, also creating some new charms, so both for my Etsy shop and for the Fiber Festival. So yes, it's been busy, busy, and trying to squeeze in knitting in between all of that, even though I'm home all day, where does the time go? Um, I have got not that much knitting done, to be honest. So I'm looking forward to this fall when it cools off, although it is a very cool day today, if you notice. I'm in a turtleneck again because the high today is just 13 degrees, so it's very cool out today, but I love it. Uh, it just almost feels like fall is on its way, which is my favorite time of year. So um, I'm looking forward to after the festival. Of course, I'm looking forward to the festival, but I'm looking forward to after the busyness of the festival to be able to relax, do some more knitting, and uh, doing some other um, crafting and artwork as well as knitting. So I'll be talking about all of that in today's episode. So um, the first thing that I wanted to do though is to award two more prizes for our Harry Potter knit along that's currently going on in the Victorian Studio podcast group over on Ravelry. Now if you haven't participated in this yet or uh, joined us over in the Ravelry group, uh, details uh, below are in the description box for links to my Ravelry group. So you're more than welcome to join us. It's never too late to join. We're in year three of the Harry Potter Cal and um, I wanted to award two more prizes for all of the participation since uh, January to the end of July. So I went to random.org earlier today and show, had it choose uh, two numbers between post number two and 592. And the first winner of a $10 US or less Ravelry pattern is post number 279, and that's Studio Von Design, Vonnie. Congratulations, Vonnie. PM me on Ravelry with your um, selection of a pattern of $10 US or less and I will gift that to you. So congrats. And the second number that random.org chose today was for a choice of a charm from my Etsy shop. So your choice, any charm in my shop. And the winning post number was 356 and that was Sylvie, Sylvie Maricara. Uh, so random.org, I guess, loved the two moderators today. I was really quite surprised. Both of those were chosen today. So Sylvie, please visit my shop and let me know what charm you'd like me to send to you. So thank you to everyone for all your participation so far. I hope it continues. And I'll be doing uh, more draws at, in the next episode for all the participation from January to the end of August, which is coming up real soon. So hopefully I uh, will be podcasting a little bit sooner. I guess I will do my next episode after the Fiber Festival. So it will be after mid-September when the next prizes will be awarded for those. Also, I wanted to thank Vani and Sylvie, the moderators, for arranging challenges as well. Uh, not only do we have prizes that are awarded for participation in the Knit Along, um, but they also have arranged for these mini challenges to go on. And I was um, remiss in letting you know that Sylvie was very kindly uh, chose me as a winner for the first challenge that she had arranged. Back in March, um, she did a ridiculous uh, challenge. And if you want to read more about it, go to our, our podcast group. It was really quite a lot of fun. 
and uh, she sent me a gift that I don't, uh, not a gift, a prize that I don't think that I um, shared on the podcast yet. So my apologies, Sylvie, for not mentioning this till now. I had it out in my pile of things to share and I just, it was just overlooked. So my apologies. What she did was um, she arranged this challenge back in March and she created the prizes for this challenge. And I was a very lucky to be one of the many winners in, in that challenge. And she did what is called tatting. And so this tatting marker, uh, she created herself. And of course, it's a Harry Potter um, design or influence design with a um, an owl and of course a Hogwarts acceptance letter. So I just love it. Sylvie, thank you so much. I think I'm going to use this to hang on one of my project bags because I love it so very much. And I can't believe that you made this yourself. Tatting is something I have never attempted and it is just beautiful. Uh, it looks like it's a very intricate and delicate craft for sure. So I know everybody loved their prizes. So thank you so very much. And the current challenge uh, is uh, was organized, thought of, and organized by Vani, our other moderator, and that's currently going on right now. And it started actually August the 1st, and it goes till the end of September. And her theme is back to school. And so she asked people uh, to participate by making house scarves. And so I will show you one of the projects that I'm working on, uh, even though I'm not going to be um, uh, eligible for prizes this time. Uh, I am uh, showing what I'm working on for a house scarf for, of course, Gryffindor House. So uh, again, thank you, Vani and Sylvie, so much for all your hard work in the uh, podcast group. Uh, I couldn't run it without the both of you, so thank you so very much. Okay, so uh, let's see. I guess I will get to the knitting. And speaking of scarves, I guess that will be the first one that I'll talk about today. Um, it's the Gryffindor Years 3 and 4 scarf. Uh, now I'm doing Years 3 and 4 because I've already made Years 1 and 2 scarf. If you've watched my podcast before, you'll have seen that I did a scarf that matched my... Um, my Quidditch sweater as well, and um, a toque, uh, all using the same yarn and with the same um, patterns, so all matching. And um, most of these um, patterns that I've been using are from the Charmed Knits book by Alison Hansel. So this is out of print, but if you really want it, you should uh, Google. I found this secondhand, of course, um, quite cheap, and it is great. I just love it. I made a few, few projects out of it. So, as I said, Allison's um, 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 pattern for the years three to four scarf is here, uh, and of course, she has details on what yarns, colors to use for not only Gryffindor, but of course the other houses as well. So uh, I had still in my stash uh, a little bit of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn, but I knew I wouldn't have enough to complete a scarf. So I did go to Knit Picks and purchase enough to finish up my uh, my scarf. So I did do a little shopping over on uh, Knit Picks. So the two yarns that I'm using for this is the same, as I said, for the previous scarf, my Quidditch sweater, and my toque. And that is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. And I'm using Garnet Heather and the Garnet uh, this is Garnet Heather as well. Let's see this. Oh, that's Garnet Heather. This, my apologies, Golden Heather. I just read it wrong. Okay, I'm getting new glasses on Friday, so that will obviously help me actually reading things. So Golden Heather, Garnet Heather. So those are the two colors that I'm using. And uh, I love this yarn. It's not scratchy at all, um, but it's a nice, nice yarn for doing these uh, sorts of projects. So this is the very simple 
pattern for the year's three and four scarves. If you've uh, watched the Harry Potter movies, you'll notice that their scarves do change um, from uh, years one and two to three and four. So I really love this pattern. Um, obviously I don't need as much of the golden heather, so I only have one of those. I believe I have about seven balls of the uh, garnet heather, and these are all um, 50 gram balls, 110 yards. So the pattern uh, calls for you to do 14, for an adult scarf anyway, 14 of these sections and I'm working on section number five. So this is a great, just a one by one rib really, but with a slip stitch uh, edging to make it nice and neat. So um, this is really nice just to uh, be able to uh, do this without kind of thinking, uh, what is it, pa potato chip knitting uh, for while I'm watching movies or TV shows or things like that. Um, so yeah, I really been in enjoying uh, knitting up my scarf and if you go over to the group you'll see lots of other scarves that are being uh, knit up so it's great to see the other houses as well. So that's uh, one project that I've been working on. Unfortunately, I haven't even picked up my Hedwig shawl, but I do want to work on that uh, and try to get it finished by the end of September um, because I've also joined in for the fourth year in a row to uh, Lydia over at the Old Loops Yarn uh, Ravelry Group for her Harry Potter um, uh, school year seven. Uh, so for, for me it's my fourth time, fourth year in a row, but she's been running it for seven years. So it's the O-Loops group over on Ravelry and uh, there's many of us that come back year after year. The only prerequisite to participate in that knit along is to purchase at least one uh, skein of her beautiful uh, O-Loops yarn to be sorted into a house and participate. So um, she's already opened up her threads for um, works in progress to uh, get points. So I've entered my uh, scarf, my shawl, and uh, some socks that I'm working on. And that's what I'll share with you next. So uh, the ones that I just started, because these um, projects had to be started to be eligible for her knit along, had to start them before the end of this month. So uh, I thought since uh, I love to do socks, as you know, if you've been here before, uh, I thought I would cast on a pair and put those in, um, in the running for her cal as well. So these ones are very uh, fall inspired. Again, just my vanilla sock pattern. Um, that's just a two by two uh, ribbed cuff for about 20 rows or so. Um, I'm using a yarn from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. Lisa over there makes incredible self-striping yarn. So I took her down at the pub, I believe it's called. Um, this was um, a, yeah, down at the pub. It was part of her happy hour yarn club that I helped um, her in running that club promotion by providing stitch march, matching stitch markers to go with these. And I believe with this one I did a pretzel. And the pretzels are now in my shop if you're interested in a, in a little beer pretzel. But this one is uh, down at the pub because it's all different um, colors of beers. So I just love this for the fall. I love the browns in this and I love her self-striping yarn because instead of counting like I did for Felici yarn, I can just knit until I get to a certain point in their colorway and then I know that um, they're matching. And if you've been here before, you know that I love to do matching socks. So again, they're two at a time, both on separate needles though. I've never attempted two at a time on the same needle. Um, but these uh, I just started a few days ago. So I've got the cuffs done. So now I'm going into uh, just a regular stockinette uh, leg. I'll do um, Mina from the Knitting Expat, her uh, German short row heel and a regular stockinette foot and Kitchener toe. So my usual uh, pattern that I love to have socks in. So 
but I love this colorway. It's so reminiscent of fall. I think it's perfect for this time of year. So uh, yeah, so there's another project that I can enter into um, the Harry Potter knit along over at Bow Loops. So I'll be working on those. And I started on those because my only finished project for this episode anyway is uh, a pair of socks again a uh, Felici pair I've been going through my Felici yarn uh, I haven't bought any for quite a while uh, so again from Knit Picks uh, let's see I have maybe one two maybe about four more colorways left in my stash um, but this one was the Sherlock oh, no, it's not Sherlock it's a Sherlock reference. It's Baker Street. And I really love the colors uh, in that. The blues, the grays, and browns. So um, this is fingering weight yarn. Again, uh, 218 yards, 50 grams. And I always have some left over. Um, I'll probably be making some more smaller projects with leftovers of all of those. <coughs> Pardon me. So. Here are my Baker Street socks. These ones are a little shorter. Sometimes I do them longer, sometimes I do them shorter. I like having a variety in my uh, sock drawer. But again, uh, I make them so that they match. And those again are my uh, two by two rib cuff. And again, I stopped just when the color changed so that I knew they would match. And then the German short row heel stockinette leg and uh, foot and a kitchener toe so another another pair of socks for my sock drawer which is getting very very full so i'm going to have to uh i think put them in either a larger drawer or find a, a new home for all these socks so uh, but i love i love wearing them and it's so nice also i used to uh, hand wash all of my socks being very careful i thought for sure they would just like fall apart if I put them in the wash me washing machine and um, I did take a chance um, a few laundry uh, days ago and did throw my socks in the laundry and they were just fine in the washing machine and in the dryer uh, so it's wonderful not to have to hand wash all of my socks anymore uh, I guess if I had some that were a very um, delicate fiber then I would hand wash them but like the Felici ones. I have so many Felici socks. Um, they've been just fine, just in the regular wash. So it's been great instead of hand washing so many of so, uh, so many socks. So um, I think that is it for my knitting. I know not a lot, um, but again, I have been having to prioritize my charms and my shop right now at least until mid-September so um, I can be prepared for the one one and only fiber festival that I'm doing one and only vending uh, that I'm doing this year so uh, once that's over I'm hoping to get back to more knitting which will mean also fall time which also means uh, you know more knitting more comfortable to do knitting when it's cooler out Okay, so on to the non-knitting portions of the podcast. I first wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who responded to my request and uh, answered my question in the last episode of what, sh what uh, charm should I create next? So I um, proposed three different charms. We had a definite winner. Uh, the three charms that I was thinking about making was a chocolate dipped strawberry, a, a piece of apple pie, or a plate of eggs and bacon. And I had lots of responses for all of them. So eventually I may be doing the two that weren't chosen this time. Um, but for uh, for a start, I did choose the winner. Uh, it, it was 14 uh, votes for chocolate dipped strawberry versus eight for apple pie and four for eggs and bacon. So thank you to everyone who took the time to uh, respond to that either on YouTube or, or over on the Ravelry group. So what I did was I put everybody's name into a list and numbered them because since we had people from um, different areas in the you know social network, uh, I put a number against everybody's name and went to random.org and it chose the winner um, 
of number nine who is Crafty Sylvie. So congratulations. Uh, when you see this, um, please PM me over on Ravelry if you're a Ravelry member. If you're not, um, just respond in the comments below uh, and that you saw this episode and I will get in touch with you and we will contact each other offline and uh, I'll arrange to get you a chocolate covered strawberry charm for your very own. So thank you so much uh, to everyone who um, who answered my questions about that. It was great to see all the responses. So uh, in upcoming episodes I will be doing the same thing. I will be asking for some help, some input into some um, future charms that you would like to see me make. So thank you everyone. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. So uh, let's see. I um, when I last recorded, it was before, a few weeks before I, or a few days before I actually had my last day of work. Um, so since then, it's kind of been a blur. My last week or two at work was so much fun. Um, I was so blown away by all of the well wishes and lunches and cards and flowers and um, you know coffees and um, and kind of going away small parties I didn't want a big tea so they very kindly um, uh, didn't didn't do something like that um, but we did have a little like coffee on one of my last days uh, so I was presented with some gift cards which was so wonderful they asked me you know what I would like as a retirement gift and I thought well maybe some gift cards that would help me in my business either to Michaels or uh, a fine art store here in Winnipeg called Artists Emporium um, besides knitting and sculpting I enjoy uh, painting and doing some fine art and if you've been around you know that um, so I thought you know having uh, gift cards to Artists Emporium I could treat myself to some art supplies uh, that I could use in my retirement for painting and that kind of thing and or uh, if I had gift cards to Michaels I could use those for supplies for my Etsy shop for, for creating charms um, as in getting Sculpey and Primo and, and Fimo and, and all those kind of things. So uh, they surprised me by giving me a ridiculous amount of gift cards to both um, Michaels and to Artists Emporium. So it, it was incredible. I was just speechless um, and it was really, really very, very sweet. Um, I was also given an incredible gift that just shows how much, uh, you know, care and thought was put into it um, by my uh, supervisor, Kieran. Uh, unfortunately, I hadn't worked with her very long. She was new to our program just last year. So unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of time to work together. But boy, did she um, nail it when she knew me. We often would talk about things like um, Game of Thrones and Harry Potter and things like that. So she knew that, you know, some of my likes. And she commissioned a local artist to create something one of a kind uh, just for me. And so I wanted to show that. And it usually hangs in my office here over my uh, monitor, um, but I wanted to take it down to show you. And because I worked in cardiac sciences, she had this created, this plaque that says House Cardiac. And if you are a Game of Thrones fan, you will recognize the theme of this. Um, it's incredible, it's all made in wood. It, she helped design it. She found this heart shape of two dire wolves. And the dire wolves are from House Stark. And uh, she had the artist who made this plaque put in House Cardiac with this heart of dire wolves. It's just incredible. She couldn't have chosen a, a better personalized gift than this. So it's such a, a wonderful remembrance of my time in the program. I was very, very touched and just thrilled uh, to have this now in my home office to remember everyone who was just so very sweet there. So like I said, besides this, 
I was um, spoiled immensely with uh, incredible um, gifts, uh, gift cards. And so I've been having great fun um, starting to spend those. Obviously, I haven't spent them all yet, but daughter and I have gone out shopping um, to already uh, get some supplies for both my shop and for my personal crafting and artwork. And, and I just found out yesterday that I'm getting another gift card from the WRHA for my 40 years of service and that's coming in the fall and uh, you know that's it's going to be to a, a local um, shopping center that has one of my favorite stores the Apple store so I may be using that to um, to also maybe get some more accessories for my home office computer so I did treat myself to to a new iMac um, this summer and also on my last day on, on the evening of the last day of work I went over to my daughter's house where we had a barbecue and uh, my daughter her husband and my husband all treated me with also more cards uh, of celebration of my retirement and also uh, a gift of upgraded memory for my computer so I it was just it was just wonderful very thoughtful gift as well that I definitely needed so that, that was wonderful and the morning of my last day my daughter and her husband got up ridiculously early and uh, surprised me by um, putting banners um, uh, all over my car and surprising me with Starbucks uh, coffee and a treat for my last day of work I go in very very early so they got up crazy early to do this and when I stepped out the door there was my car uh, strewn with this um, uh, paper banners to celebrate my last day so uh, yeah it was just a, a crazy uh, last few days that I was really overwhelmed with with all the wonderful things all the all the wonderful people uh, around me that is so appreciative so so very lucky so um, as I said the last few weeks it's just been more uh, feeling like a vacation than a true retirement so I guess that will sink in in a few months um, but as I said daughter and I went shopping so I have been also um, dabbling in a, a few new um, arts and crafts that I haven't either done in a long time or haven't done before um, so some of the um, supplies I got at RS Emporium were in anticipation of a couple of things one of them is I would really love to participate in Inktober this year and if you're not familiar with what that is Inktober was started back a few years ago I think this is the 10th year started by I believe Jake Parker on YouTube and uh, he um, puts out a list for all the days of October with drawing prompts and they're uh, either single word or a couple word daily prompts um, where people draw something using ink either I mean it can be anything really it can be digital it can be traditional art but most people do traditional inking either with um, uh, fountain pens, regular inking pens, markers, even Copics, those kind of things. But what I really wanted to try was a dip pen. And so one of the supplies that I did get um, at Artists Emporium was a, a set of uh, beautiful Bombay inks. So I'm looking forward to uh, using some of these in uh, in October this year. I also sent away for a beautiful pen uh, from Japan so this is for um, a few ink uh, nibs that I do have as well so I'm looking forward to using some of these both black and um, different colors and even a few metallic inks uh, in Inktober this year so uh, another supply that I got um, with daughter at Artist Emporium were some books. I want to be able to dedicate uh, one book to Inktober so I got a variety of different papers and books both for watercolors and for inking. Watercolors because I'll show you coming up next what else I treated myself to. 
But for Inktober, I do want to use uh, a special book just for that, for all the projects in that. I also got um, a sketching book so I can uh, do some preliminary sketches in that. And one of my favorite artists is Robert Bateman and this is uh, his sketchbook. I also got a huge book, I won't show it here, it's like really big, uh, Robert Bateman book as well. Uh, so that would be great for doing sketches. Uh, I also got, these ones were at Michael's actually, uh, some uh, different uh, mixed media and watercolor um, pads. So I'm really set for paper. Um, and I also treated myself to some beautiful arches uh, paper. And this is uh, paper from France. Uh, they've been making this paper since 1492. And it is beautiful uh, cotton uh, paper. So cold pressed. So um, I thought I would try some of these uh, once I get uh, a little more experienced with watercolors. I have tried watercolors before, but I made the mistake of using um, very cheap uh, watercolors. So this was great to be able to go to Artist Emporium and get some beautiful quality uh, watercolors. So I also got myself like all kinds of uh, watercolor pencils and paints and I got all kinds of um, supplies for doing watercolor drawing. And I'm expecting some more pans of these watercolors. For now I have in this set, I got the box on Amazon, but these pans of watercolors are made in Saskatchewan, the next door neighbor to Manitoba where I live uh, here in Canada. And these are incredibly beautiful pan uh, watercolors. I have some gouache in here as well. So I've been having great fun. I've got 10 colors here. I've got another 10 on the way. Um, but for now I wanted to at least try my hand at some watercolor. When I used the inferior watercolors before I really wasn't happy. I was getting frustrated with watercolors. I oil painted many many years ago and so I thought well maybe I'm just not a watercolorist. But I think it depends on really on the quality of the supplies that you use. And so these watercolors um, were just so beautiful to use. I did try, I'll show you, um, my first attempt using these watercolors uh, was a bird. Uh, so this is um, just something that I tried a, a few weeks ago as my first attempt with watercolors. And what I might do, because it's kind of Christmassy, I might scan that and that might be my Christmas card for this year. Um, so we'll see. But I really loved using the watercolors and the white gouache uh, in that. I'll also put a photo of this at the end so you can see it a little bit better. Um, but I really loved learning on YouTube um, the proper way to watercolor and to use gouache. I've never used that before. So uh, I had great fun doing that. So uh, besides the watercolor pencils, I still have to um, use those, but I've um, swatched those out. I have a swatch here. Um, so these are the Prismacolor uh, watercolor pencils. And so uh, these I'm really looking forward to creating with as well. I was really surprised on how beautifully um, they they work with, with water. So I'm really looking forward to doing that as well. And also daughter suggested some of these beautiful pearlescent watercolors. Uh, I believe she uses some of these with some of her uh, crafting. By the way, um, she did my nails again. And this time they were steampunk themed. I will put a picture in uh, of these so that you can see them better. But if you notice my nails were different again, it's uh, because uh, my daughter is um, awesome at doing my nails. Uh, she suggested this Fine Tech Pearlescent Color Set. And these are beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to creating with those. So yeah, I'm going to have lots of fun. But I'll have more time to play with these after the Fiber Festival. So at least I did the one watercolor for now. I know I love it. And as I said, I've been watching lots of YouTube videos um, on how to watercolor 
properly using the proper paper and the proper supplies. So uh, yeah, it's it's been great fun to uh, to treat myself uh, using that. There's been a few other treats that I've uh, purchased for myself over the last few weeks that I wanted to share with you as well. Speaking of YouTube, I do spend a lot of time on YouTube um, watching podcasts, studio vlogs, um, tutorials all the time when I'm making charms or knitting or uh, working on other things at my desk here. And uh, there's been a few YouTubers that I've been watching for quite a while um, that I really wanted to support and also have a piece of their art as well. And so I thought I would share uh, a few things uh, from them with you. The first one is from Bailey J. She is in, an artist in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm sure um, a lot of you would know who Bailey is. Um, she's got a huge following of over a million um, subscribers, uh, but she does not only um, kind of um, anime art, she also creates uh, pins and she doesn't put them on sale very often. Uh, it's been I think over a year since she had anything in her shop. So I wanted to make sure because I have uh, a couple of cats myself, she has two cats, I wanted to get her cat pins, her Kiki and Midna pins. So I was very lucky to be able to uh, catch a sale of hers and be able to snag one of these pins for myself. So again, I'll probably put this on a project bag um, to, uh, to remember uh, Bailey with. And speaking of pins, another YouTube artist that I enjoy watching is Ellis Woolley. Um, she is in at Pastel Elixir in the UK. She has a lovely um, YouTube channel and I will link all of these below so that you can uh, check them out as well. Uh, Ellis is so sweet, very, very uh, good artist. And uh, so I went to her uh, website and I got myself a little fox pin which I love of hers, I love Fox. And a little red panda. And this is a keychain on wood. It's beautiful, little red panda. So yes, her work is just so beautiful. Really, really love watching her. And then the third one uh, that I got is somebody else I've been watching for quite a while. And this is a young lady from Australia by the name of Rachel. And I learned a lot when I was just starting out creating with polymer clay. Um, she does very um, anime inspired uh, creations, but she did have a lot of tutorials that taught me quite a bit. So it's very difficult to uh, find um, or to catch her sales because they are so sporadic. I think it was well over a year since she had her last sale. So I was very lucky to create to grab something from Creative uh, Creative Rachie uh, from Australia when she had her last sale. I got her cute little baby fawn. And this again is done in polymer clay. You can see her style is so very sweet. You can see why they're very, very popular. They sell out like Bailey J's uh, within minutes. So if you are lucky enough to be at the right time, especially when it's Australia, um, I was able to log in and quickly grab uh, one of her creations. So I just love it. I love having a piece of other people's, other artists' work um, in my studio here. So yeah, I thought I would share those with you. The other thing I treated myself to um, was a beautiful project bag by Amelia. She is a friend through Ravelry and Instagram. Wonderful lady who lives in the States right now, but she is a Canadian. And so um, I have um, uh, talked with her quite a bit online. Ne never met her in real life. That would be wonderful if we could ever meet in real life one day. But she opened up a brand new shop um, a few weeks ago and I was absolutely thrilled just to catch her at the right time to be her very first customer for her new Etsy shop. And of course I'll link it below. And this is the bag I was able to grab and I know um, I was there before a lot of people I'm sure wanted this beautiful um, bee and bear themed bag. It is so adorable. It is incredibly well made. I just love it. 
Not only is the fabric so adorable, she also has a little bee stitch marker on here, or like charm on there as well. Beautiful little tag. And as I said, her work is impeccable. Beautiful inside. Of course, she added some tea. So now I can have these teas now that I've shown them to you. Um, but yeah, I haven't uh, purchased a, a project bag in a long time, but I was absolutely thrilled to be her very first customer. So thank you so much, Amelia, and good luck with your new shop. I know you'll do a fantastic um, business because your work is absolutely beautiful. So uh, I thought I would share that with you as well. So um, I think that's the end of all the treats that I have um, I given to myself. Uh, let's see, as I said in the beginning, I'm very busy preparing for the Manitoba Fiber Festival. It's Friday, September the 13th and Saturday, September the 14th. So not only is it my only uh, vending opportunity this year. It's the first time I've ever been at any location that is more than one day. So it'll be Friday evening and uh, all day Saturday. So my daughter is going to be helping me out there. And uh, so I've been working on um, our display. I've been um, getting more inventory created for it. And when I send out my charms from my Etsy shop, I send them out wrapped in bubble wrap and in um, little gift boxes. But when I'm vending at shows, I actually put my um, charms on individual card backers. So that's a, a lot of work to, um, to get the inventory and card them all and everything. So uh, I've been very, very busy doing that. I even um, purchased some new storage boxes for my inventory from Uline. I was able to find a whole bunch of really nice white boxes. Actually, I'll grab one here if I can, just behind the camera, just to show you. Um, these are some uh, nice cardboard boxes that I ordered. It's upside down right now, but I have a little bit of washi tape because when the box is closed, this is the lid that I have it in, um, I put on the boxes these clear um, little envelopes that I can slide this card in and using either um, uh, pens like the, the friction pens that I can erase them or pencil, I can write the actual contents of each box on the label. So when we have these stored under our table at the show, uh, we can restock the table very easily because we can tell which charms are in which box. So um, these boxes are a good size. What I did was I took some regular cardstock and um, used my Martha Stewart um, scoring device to score some lines in them and create little channels so that I could put my cards in here. Uh, it's kind of hard to show you without them falling forward, but yeah, these boxes will be filled with uh, with charms. I'm sure I'm going to have about half a dozen of these under our uh, table. Um, but just to show you, for example, what I do when uh, we're at shows is uh, my charms are on these uh, little card backers. These cards I also uh, put into orders on Etsy because they have care instructions on the back. So um, people do get them, but I don't put every charm on, on cards. But during shows, it's a great way to display and price each charm. So that's a fair amount of work to get them all carded and priced and all of that. And I've also got a new square reader, so I have to enter all my inventory into the square device. I have a desktop model this time instead of just a swipe one for our phones. So now we'll be able to have people just tap and pay for their purchases. So that's wonderful. So getting all these things uh, prepared for the show has been quite a lot of fun. It's a good thing I'm home because I've been so busy. I don't know if I'd ever be able to get it all done if I was still working full time. So, um, so speaking of restocking, not only am I making uh, more of my existing stock, I've been trying to incorporate some new designs and I'm still working on some, but I'll show you three that I've completed since the last episode. 
obviously one of them will be the chocolate dipped strawberry uh, that was the winner of the little poll that I did um, from the last episode so I did create these and I will have photos uh, of these at the end of the episode as well as I'll have some sped up videos showing some of the things that I've been working on as well so I hope you get a kick out of seeing those um, but these chocolate covered strawberries come in both uh, gold silver and brass findings so these are in my shop now. I just put them in the Etsy shop yesterday, I believe. They are, um, if you're interested in updates of when I am restocking my shop with new items, follow me on Instagram. Um, the link is below. And I announce on Instagram when I do uh, put new things into the shop. So I did uh, do an Instagram post yesterday on this, which also links to my Facebook page. So either place you'll be able to find out when a uh, new stock arrives. Um, but the thing I also have been very, very busy with over the last, well, few weeks since I've been retired is I have now uh, changed over and ensured that every single one of my charms now in my, my inventory um, have the following three findings. Uh, for antique brass, they have the antique brass two rings and antique brass lobster clasp. So those were all matching. For all the gold findings on all of my charms, they all now come with gold plated rings. So no more gold tone, gold plated rings, but I couldn't find gold plated lobster clasps. So they do have still the gold tone lobster clasps but uh, gold plated rings on every one of those and on every single um, silver charm silver finding charm they have um, silver plated rings and silver plated lobster clasps so uh, if you see those uh, on uh, on the shop you will know that all of the gold plated and silver plated as well as all of the charms that are uh, the brass are all lead nickel cadmium free and all non-toxic so uh, my supplier um, had all of those in there of uh, listings for the supplies that i get so i wanted to make sure that everybody knew that on my shop as well so i've updated my shop uh, announcement to show that as well um, so for uh, the other things that I've been working on, um, I did two new designs and one of them are some little mini chocolate bars. So those are there and those were just put in the shop yesterday as well. They come in either the silver uh, plated rings and lobster clasp or the gold plated rings and gold tone lobster class so the silver ones have the silver foil on the outside i have a two-toned uh, foil that i've used for this one side is gold one side is silver so for the silver rings i put the silver on the outside and for the gold rings the gold foil is on the outside so again i'll have photos of those as well and the last new charm that I designed um, was a jack-o'-lantern and this one took a few tries to create. Um, I've previously had a jack-o'-lantern where I had the uh, face painted on but this time I wanted to do a 3D uh, jack-o'-lantern so I have pumpkins in my shop already so this was made very, very similarly with a, a pumpkin but on the inside I have this sparkly black um, clay so that it actually sparkles through the eyes and the mouth and then I overlaid that with the orange clay uh, that has a cutout face so it's more of a 3D um, more realistic look uh, um, jack-o'-lantern so that's just in time for people starting to think about Halloween because I also restocked my glowing ghosts these glow in the dark so I think these would make a great pair if you're into getting some 
Halloween items. Start thinking about Halloween already. I know all the stuff is out at Michael's already for Halloween. Lots of people are posting Halloween yarns and, and project bags. My favorite time of year. So uh, yeah, I wanted to be sure to get a, uh, a new charm for Halloween. So um, yeah, that's I think it. Um, Let's see, like I say, I will be attending the Manitoba Fibre Festival in September. I'll be sure to do some recording of a video at the show and in setting up and that kind of thing. So I'll be able to share that with you uh, on the next episode. And um, uh, I will, as usual, put in some photos and videos at the end of this episode as well. So until the next time that I record, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I had to share and I hope you'll come back to see me again for a visit in my Victorian studio. Until then, take care everyone. Bye-bye.